Hey everybody, today Rado talks through Brotherhood of the Coast, which is the latest scenario for time stories, and really to date, it is probably the biggest, most ambitious one we've seen. So I'm going to spend a few minutes today just kind of walking you through what you would experience just for the first few minutes of gameplay so you have an idea of what makes this different. I'm not going to do any kind of story spoiler stuff. I'm going to stay away from all of that so you don't have to worry. If you want to get an idea of how the gameplay changes and evolves and is enhanced, you can keep on watching. But if you don't want to know any of that stuff, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen and just go straight to final thoughts. Uh, in five. Five, four, three, two, one. You're still here. All righty. Let's open her up. Wow. Look at this. What is this? It's another board. Dun, dun, dun. Never seen that before. Basically, it's pretty simple. The way it works, you just put it up here at the top, and you kind of put your board over the top of it to keep it kind of lying flat. And you've got, it's like you've got a whole bunch more codex. Look at all of this business for ships and um, how high seas combat works. Because, of course, we're pirates in this game. We are brother in the Brotherhood of the Coast. Also, how it works to sail from place to place. The events you will run across at sea, your ship, and and the enemy ships you might engage in battle. Right, so got a whole bunch of new stuff up here to deal with. All right, and let's go on ahead and open up deck number one of five. But what's this? Here's decks two of five, three of five, four of five, and deck five of five. Look at all these cards. So much exploratin'. All righty. So let's get out deck card number one first because, like I said, I'm just trying to give you that opening feel that you always get. Hey, it's just a blocker, and oh, well, of course, we're going to start out. Let's go ahead and move this back and probably kind of zoom in a little bit here. Boop. Let's go to the base. Let's say hi to Bob and everybody. All righty. And so now you can pause and read this yourself if you want. I'm not necessarily going to because I don't necessarily have to tell you all the particulars, but if you want, I'm just going to let you read them after I lay them all out here. So, here we are, and Time uh, Headquarters HQ. What does Bob have to say? Well, pause and read to your heart's content. There we go, there we go. Should be able to read that. And then, good old Laura, crazy hologram lady shows up, giving us some more specifics. Now, if you're not pausing and reading, don't worry, I'll just sum up the most important stuff here. Um, one thing I will say, is I think this is probably the coolest setting out mission. What we are told we have to do, if you're reading all this, and then what we set out to do, that's it's 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 a it's really super thematically appropriate for a tales of high sea adventures of piracy and all that kind of stuff. Right. So those are all the basics. If you wanted to read it. And if not, uh, the main thing we know is we've got some more cards to put out here. Let's see. For starters, let's come up here to our codex, or actually let's come up here to our new board. We put a sailing card and the rules are very clear. Don't actually look at this until the first time you're actually gonna set sail, <clears throat> which I have to admit is kind of nice. They don't dump all the rules on you right from the get-go. That is actually, I think, a sign of maturity because you don't need to know how to sail right at the beginning of the game, right when you're setting everything up. So they leave some of the rules for when the event when the when it eventually comes around. Let's see. It also tells us to put our at sea cards right here. This is basically a deck of events, good and bad things that can happen as we set sail. Okay, and then here's another instructional card, our naval combat. Again, uh, we will be doing ship-to-ship -ship combat over the course of this game, but we don't know the particulars of how we do it until we eventually start our first fight. So it just kind of lives over here. Now, at the beginning of the game, we get a Merchant Sloop, uh, which comes back over here and it just sits here. Uh, it's got some stats. You read about those stats, perhaps. The important thing is there is a hold where we can store our booty. Uh, if uh, They're called crates that we can get for you know engaging in sea combat and digging up buried treasure and all the types of stuff you would expect. We carry it around in our hold and use it for various and sundry things. Now, over the course of the game, we can upgrade ships. We can get better ships that have better cannons, more hit points, and stuff like that. And we 
we will definitely need to do this because there is the potential, the very high potential, for a lot of ship-to-ship -ship combat in this game. Now we always get the old icon reference to remember. Combat, dexterity, charisma, cannons, a port, uh, gold barrels. That's what they're called, not chests, but crates, barrels. And your ship, alrighty, and shields, and you know, just all the basic reminder stuff. And uh, what do we got? Well, we are... Pirates of the Caribbean in this game. So our starting map is the Caribbean with the island of San Juan, the, uh, oops, there we go, the island of Port Royal, and let's see here, the island of Tortuga, this little tiny island off of this major island. Now, as you might imagine, uh, that's not everything. There will be other places to explore and sail using the standard time stories as this map upgrades and evolves. Right off the bat, you can see there's a couple of other islands. You can see there's kind of a big island right here in the middle. And who knows what uh, lies in wait. And then finally, we get, of course, a deck full of items. Oops, here's the rest of them. Lots and lots and lots and lots of items. They go in the item slot, as do our mission failure and success type stuff. You know, all the norms. And then finally, our characters. A buccaneer, a pirate captain, a quartermaster, a pirate surgeon, a boatswain, and a noble Spanish lady. Now, if you want, you can go on ahead again and pause and read the backstories of these characters and get an idea of what their special powers are. Uh, and if you don't, if you just want to be surprised, don't pause. Don't look at this very closely. I'm just going to go through them pretty quick. But uh, suffice to say, there's some pretty standard stuff. Uh, you know, uh, nothing in here made me say, oh, wow, that just really reinvents the wheels. Uh, as always, you're just going to pick a, a group of characters. You know, some of them have strengths or weaknesses. One thing that's interesting, I will say, the rule Rules for a three-player game, the main balance they do is it says everybody starts with two more gold than they normally should. And that's really about it for a player scaling between four and three. And of course, well, I don't need to talk about two players. But anyway, that was everything that was in the main um, bag. And of course, the first thing we're going to have to do is decide where, oh, where do we want to sail to? It's totally up to us um, to figure out which zone? Do we want to start out in San Juan or Tortuga or Port Royal? Well, what happens when we do that? Well, we had to open up the other two decks. These are available right from the get-go. We have the deck of San Juan in Codex 1, the deck of Tortuga in Codex 2, the deck of Port Royal, and you know, including a little advertisement and stuff like that. And, and then, most importantly, twice as big as any of the other islands, the Terra Incognito, Incognita deck. Lots and lots of Terra Incognita stuff, as you might imagine, that goes to Codex 4. So right from the get-go, we decide, are we going to go to San Juan? If so, we open this deck and we start figuring out what is going to be what on San Juan. And just to give you an idea, let's just say we go to San Juan. Now, you might want to bail, but I'm just going to open up the first, just to give you an idea of what the art looks like. Um, let's see. Or do you want to go to Tortuga or Port Royal? Eh, no, nah, no, nah, let's just go with San Juan. Just completely arbitrarily. So, hey, uh, every one of these has their own little local map. If we don't, um, unlike regular time stories, we don't get rid of the current map. This stays on the board all the time. But on our extra board, you recall, where we keep all our other cards, we have a space for the map of the island that we're currently on. And as you might imagine, we can move around from space to space. We're supposed to keep this token out on the main map as a reminder of what island we're on, and then just use one of the little tokens to indicate where we're going when we're on a given island. And like regular time stories, we're gonna explore, we're gonna talk to people, we're gonna run into dead ends, everything you would expect. But let's say we went to San Juan and chose to start out in um, Manolo's Tavern. Just totally arbitrarily, that made sense to us. You can read that if you like or not. But let's just lay it out again just to set the scene, just to give you an idea of what the, you know, the mood and the atmosphere and the ambiance is like. So obviously a lot of people in the tavern to go talk to. Who are you going to talk to? Well, that's up to you because I am not going to take it any further than this. That is basically your five minute, or what am I at? I'm almost at 10 minutes now. Somehow, why does it take me 10 minutes to do a five minute intro? But from this point on, we are going to move around. We are going to explore 
we are going to talk to people. We are going to collect items. We are going to start to uncover mysteries. All of the standard stuff. Eventually, when we go back out to sea, we will read how the sailing works. Um, and there's really not much to say to it other than the fact that it takes time to sail from one place to another and you have an event deck. There's a little bit more to it than that, but an event deck that will surprise you. Sometimes you'll get great opportunities at sea. You'll find um, lost islands. Sometimes uh, you'll get attacked by ships and you better be ready to fight and whatnot. And then, of course, there's the other card that is devoted to describing how combat works. It's mostly the same as regular combat. Uh, there's just a few little twists here and there. Uh, so it's pretty simple. The combat at high seas, if you've ever played Time Stories, you won't have a hard time figuring it out. Um, but if you go out on the high seas with just that little merchant sloop, you better hope to not run afoul of some of the big scary ships that are out there. That is it, folks. That is the basics of Brotherhood of the Coast. Now, there's not really much more I can say without going into spoilers. I'm going to spoil one thing right now. Uh, because like I said, really, other than the fact that there's just more you can do, or kind of more takes on stuff we've always been able to do, there's one very, very important new thing here. Uh, you, if you don't want to hear it, but it's very, very minor, you will discover it as soon as you fail your first time. And you will fail. Uh, like the last few, at the beginning, it doesn't give us very much time. Bob says, you only got 20 minutes, or you know, 20 units, and you better believe we're not going to, that's not enough to get anything done. So very quickly, we will be told the very very important thing. And if you don't want to hear it, you want to wait and be surprised like we were, because it was a very pleasant surprise, you can go ahead and hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen. Otherwise, I'm going to spoil it right now. When we fail our first time... Have you gone yet? Have you gone to five, four, three, two, one? Here's what happens on our first mission fail. You can go on ahead and pause and read it if you like. Here's Bob complaining, like always. Here's the important stuff. Where is it? Um... This one right here, this paragraph, this is a total game changer. This is a really big, I'm not going to tell you what item 40 is, but this is huge. The main thing about this expansion is, while it is still as Groundhog Day as ever focused as any other time stories, uh, this one, you know, including dead ends that force you to restart, not much time at the beginning, you get more time later on, this one gives you so much more control than just picking some new characters to go. And it creates a lot more interesting, deep decisions. Now, I'm already getting into final thoughts, so I'm going to stop right there. Again, hit that eye in the top right corner screen, follow the show notes for final thoughts in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Are you still here? One! Zero! Bye.